Okay, I just went for a little night grocery store run, which low key, I love grocery shopping at night. I don't do it often, but when I do, it's always the best because there's nobody in the grocery store. They have restocked everything. The produce is fresher. Like everything's been restocked, it's the best. Like go to the grocery store when they're about to close. Trust me. I don't know if it's every time, but when I be going, I be like, this is the best time to motherfucking grocery shop. Okay, I walked out with one bag. Well, technically two bags. This is all I have, right? This came up to $62. Let's break down what's in here. Coconut oil, Kroger brand erasing pads, my invisible Mighty Patches, mascara, and a new e.l.f. brush. Well, it's an e.l.f. brush I already used, but I wanted a fresh one. Sour cream and a lime, and three flowers. The most expensive things in this were the Nativa oil and the Mighty Patch. These are $20. That's a lot. I'm gonna have to start exploring other options, but I like these a lot. So it's worth it to me because I feel like it does a great job. Like they are my dude. And y'all know I use this to cook all the motherfucking time. I use it to cook, I put it on my lips, I've used it on my skin. I love coconut oil. So these are things that I'm just going to purchase regardless of the price. This was $1.50, it was on sale. This was seven something dollars, it was also on sale. This was $6, it was on sale. These were on sale for $1.75. And the sour cream I think was like $2. How this got to $60 is crazy to me, but you know what's crazier is that those prices that I read to you that were on sale prices, I feel like used to be the normal price. And that's the fucked up thing about inflation because inflation is the type of bitch that will just lie to you in your face, okay? Like, will really have you believing that the sales are the sales when in reality, the sale ain't nothing but it being back its normal price. This used to be seven something dollars. Why is the sale price seven dollars? Elf brushes used to be, okay, six dollars or less. Why is this the sale price for an elf brush? What's crazier is that I went to the grocery store only for sour cream. So there's that. Went there for sour cream because I know tomorrow I wanna, I need to make these potatoes because, ooh, I might've missed my mark. Oh, I might've missed my mark, girl. I might have to replace these. They growing legs and they a little too squishy for my liking. Like I could get away with eating these, I think, but. Who wants to get away with it? I'd rather just get safe with it, you know? Put these to the side. Also have some Japanese potatoes that I need to make. They're still in good condition, but I need to make them a savagery. Yeah, vlog came out today. It was, a, it was a nice work day. I even took a break and went on a walk in the middle of the work day. It was a good day. Even though I was working all day, it was still good. You put me in, make it out of Oh. My God, you look stunning, my love. Well, I could do that, but you know, I little things, and sometimes I have to tell her to shut up. I mean, I don't need somebody like naked dancing on the table. This is fabulous. This is so good. You should be in a salon type thing. She was just so. Yes, I did. Okay. So part of the thing is, I've been diffusing after I wash my hair. And I do think that it helps my scalp to not act crazy. I'm also going to put in this anti-dandruff leave-in from Shea Moisture. Because I also think this helps. My hair is a little damp, but not at the root. Which is the most important for me to dry. I want my scalp to be dry. Also, when I diffuse, I have my thumb on the cool button the whole time. I do put a little bit of a serum on my hair before I start diffusing, even though I have it on the cool. I put this, the Silk Elements 
uh, glossing polish, which is also a heat protectant. I put a little bit on my hair too, just in case. Cute. Hair is still a little wet at the bottom, but it'll dry. Oh, yeah. I feel like it's been a minute since I did my makeup up here. I am rushing. Lately, I have been... You know when someone says, like, what time do you think you'll be ready? Or what time do you think you'll make it over here? I am like, oh, all I need is, like, maybe an hour or two? Bitch, please. I need to give myself three hours. <laughs> Especially on a hair wash day. I was tripping. All right. Quick makeup. I'm gonna just do concealer. Oh, I forgot to mention this in the last video, but with the free and true skincare, that vitamin C stuff, it pills. So like, if you like rub on your skin, it'll pill like white material, you'll see that. So I don't use that when I'm wearing makeup. That is exclusively for non-makeup days. When I'm doing makeup, I use the Skin Glass Mist. I don't use the essence from free and true. And I also, um, and I just put on the moisturizer and sunscreen. I don't use the hyaluronic serum or the vitamin C. I mentioned this, but color correcting has really been my girl. The one thing I have to remind myself is to only put it where it's dark. I be low key putting it all over like a concealer. So like, I need to clean that up. Just in the dark area. I love doing my makeup right after I wash my skin. Like when my skin is still so supple and soft, it's the best. I be doing this live on TikTok and I'm just like, how crazy I look right now. It's like, how about I just not do this on TikTok anymore? How about that? How about that? Like, girl. I was watching this interview Amanda Seals did, well this podcast that she did, and on it she was talking about relationships. It's a relationship podcast, so. She had mentioned, she had asked men what are some of the things, I forget exactly what it was, but basically like, what are some of the things women do that you consider too masculine? And she said they were sending things like, too competitive, um, wanna, I forget what it was, I wish I could remember, maybe I'll insert the clip. But man, I thought that was really, I, oh, let me get myself together before I keep talking. Cause what the fuck? Hold on, bitch. That's one thing about me. So, she said she was getting back a lot of responses like that. And she was like, okay, so it's, this sounds like toxic masculinity. So is it okay when a man does this then? And I was just like, ooh, great point. Like, what makes it okay for a man to be super competitive and wanna lead and, you know, all those things that she mentioned. What makes it okay for him to do that and not for a woman to want to do that? And obviously it's gonna take a certain type of maturity to answer that question because if your response is just like, cause that's what men do, that's what men, that's not, that's not gonna fly. That's not gonna fly. Because none of us just do things just to do them. We, we do them because we're taught, we do stuff out of fear, we do stuff out of ego. You know, we do things based on, you know, society's expectations. Nothing is just cause. That's great. Wow, color correcting is literally a game changer for me. Like, no lie. But that whole interview was just very relatable because it was just very relatable as another woman who, you know, deals with men who expect you to like wanna argue or like be confrontational or like want you to like engage in a back and forth and it's like, I don't wanna do that shit with my nigga. Like, I don't. People conflate your passion for what's going on in the world and in pop culture for like your day to day. And it's like, that's just not the situation. I need people who read the room well. Like, I just feel like that's like a characteristic that you either got or you don't. I think a lot of people don't have that. They just lack awareness so bad that they don't even know that the shit they be doing just be off. Doing a little bit of blush, not a lot today. 
Now, Amanda had also called herself smart woman, dumb girl, meaning and all the other aspects in her life, you know, her, her career life, how she carries herself in other areas. She's very smart, makes good decisions, but when it comes to men, she doesn't make the best decisions. And there was a time when, when I was able to relate to that, but not anymore. I am a very responsible woman, like to a fault. And I won't risk all the things that I've worked for even like things that are not tangible, but just like mentally and emotionally, like I'm not gonna risk losing those things for nobody. Nobody, nobody. So I do not make decisions that I don't think are smart when it comes to men because I have a fear of losing things. I'm frugal with my money and I'm frugal about these niggas. I'm not just about to talk to nobody. And I'm certainly, one, one other thing that I just can't relate to is the whole like giving money to people. I'm not, I'm not doing that girl. I don't know at what point in the relationship y'all be like, oh well, he needs it. So no girl, I'm sorry. And this is where I think like who you were raised by, this whole thing, I think, you know, how you are in relationships. I think who you were raised by and what they taught you. See, I wiped a little bit off, I did this last time. Who you were raised by and what they taught you, I think affects the decisions that you make around relationships. And I was just raised by a no nonsense type woman. No nonsense, no excuses, you know, all that. Now, we're different in the sense that I'm, I don't think that I'm as harsh as I felt like she was at times, but giving money to men, that's not something that I know anything about. So for my girls that are watching that have done that, if you feel comfortable sharing, please let me know what drove you to tricking off on one of these dudes out here in the street. And I know women who have done this and I'm just like, you did what? You gave your money to who? I just can't even. Giving money to a friend, a sibling, a family member, that's one thing. But giving money to a man you dating or talking to? I don't know. And we not talking about you paying for dinner or you buying them a present or, you know, it's them type of circumstances. I'm talking about he asked you for money and you gave it to him. Or he sold you a story about he done fell on hard times and you gave him some bread. Uh, I don't know. Actually, I do know. This is Kennedy from the future, bitch. This is Monday Kennedy. I'm editing this bitch. And I'm like, hold up, ho. You do know. Don't give no nigga no money, period. It ain't never been no situation where it was worth it. Where you got, it was an investment. You know what I'm saying? Where you got your money's worth. It ain't never gave that. I ain't never had a situation, you know, where one of my friends gave money to somebody and that nigga was worth something. Don't do it. I don't know who's listening to this. I don't care how old you are. I don't care what they told you. Do not do it. They will figure it out the same way you figured it out. And don't let nobody guilt you either about you not giving them no money. You, you bitch, don't fucking do it. Goodbye. I love you. Goodbye. Okay. I hate when somebody who don't be using Uber like that opens up their Uber in front of me and I see that they have all these discounts. I never get offered a discount on Uber and I get... They are tripping. This Uber is $60. It's never that. See, this is, what I'm, this, this, this is what the fuck I be talking about. So now let me go to Lyft. I be trying to... I don't like Lyft. So that's why I don't use Lyft. But I'm not dealing with that. Yeah, here we go. And here's Lyft. And it's thirty dollars cheaper. That's crazy, insane. That's the thing about it. Like Uber, you're not giving me nothing from me exclusively using you. It's not like Delta where you have like a Sky Miles number. So, thank you. And I'm getting picked up in a BM dude. It's an old one, but still. Okay, we doing what needs to be done. Okay, I'll see you girls later.
Bye. My hands are washed. It is a 74 degree day. I'm looking so frazzled because I'm running like a chick with my head cut off. I am going to change my glasses. Let's put on some jewelry. Go green. Ooh, my hands look ashy. Ashy girl. I think for, oh shoot. See, this is why it's important to do your makeup in natural light. I've been doing my makeup in my room under the light. And it's looking a little crazy. Hold on. Wait a minute, bitch. I don't play about that. It's just a little bit orange. We don't do orange. It's giving Donald Trump special. Okay, so for me to fix that, all I gotta do is get some bronzer on my neck a little bit. And not all over, just on like the high points. The areas that kind of stick out, I'll put it there. And that helps to, ooh girl, I tell you I'm rushing. <laughs> But you know what I think the redness is? I think it's actually because I color corrected. Or the orangeness. I know, I think, I know that's what it is. But let's, let's see, maybe some jewelry will help. Hair looks amazing. I feel like I'm giving like a very 90s look today. Jewelry, I think I want like some, sometimes I just like to go studs because studs just look the best to me. I'm carrying this bag and I don't want to be too black and gold like, that starts looking corny to me. So I'm just gonna do a stud. Even, that didn't look bad, but I just don't. God, that strong, I got the strongest knee in town. That was just my knee. But I just don't want to. That's all I was gonna say, goddamn. A bitch can't want to? Nah, do, do a bitch have to? God, dang. All right, now you're getting crazy. What else do we get? Oh, I see. Hopefully everything's still intact. Yeah, see, to me, like, a stud just is like, it's pretty. And y'all know I'm a big hoop girl, but I like a nice skinny big hoop. I think that looks different than like a thicker hoop. And they in the back room right now and I, I can't run back there. I got to go. All right. Let's show the whole moment. All right. Tag off. We are officially keeping this bag. Thank you. No, thank you. Yeah, so the look is exactly what you see. We've got on a long sleeve top belt, long jeans, low rise jeans, with my black and brown loafers. Mostly black, but the bottoms are brown. The trim is brown. I actually love them a lot. Uh, but yeah, that's the look for today. And just, I smell amazing, like truly. I'm just gonna keep my hair like this. I was thinking about maybe doing like some up, some down, but it's a good hair day. We'll leave it. But yeah, I'll see y'all when I get back. Bye. I'm hungry, so I don't know if I should talk about this now because I'm kind of hangry. I was hanging out with a guy friend and no disrespect to this guy friend, but hanging out with him made me think about this. I don't think I've ever been around a man or met a man that Mm, let me say not of recent, not of recent. Cause I remember specifically liking this guy back in the day because he was just so cool to me. He liked different music than me. He didn't care what people thought. He was just hella himself and that type of shit is really attractive. I will date a guy that, he was still cute. Don't get me wrong, like he was cute. Nobody would say he ain't cute, but I wouldn't say he was like my typical type. Anyway, um, yeah girl, I feel like, oh, 
Chella? I said, I feel like I have not met a man recently that's more interesting than me. Like a man that's put me onto music I ain't never heard of. A man that brought a conversation to me that feels interesting and thought provoking. Um, a man whose style has been like, ooh, I like his style. Like, I just ain't been seeing it. I just ain't been seeing it. Y'all know to cut these down, right? When the tips start growing, cut these down. Cause if you don't, the inside of your nose is gonna be black. For real, it's gonna be soot everywhere. I remember the first time I realized that was happening, it was in an old apartment and it was sitting by a wall and I finally blew the candle out and on the wall I could see just like black all on the wall. I said, what the? <laughs> so yeah, cut them tips. But yeah, girl, I just, I really just, I'm like, I don't, I don't feel like I'm alone in this, in this experience of like, not meeting guys that are interesting or like more bring more interesting shit in my life like they might be interesting but it's like it's not interesting to the point where it's like oh i'm so glad i met them i don't know if you know what i'm saying but it's just like hello this is not a competition of like who can be more interesting but i think when it when you when, for me with dating it's like for me to like somebody and want to spend time with them and want to, you know what I'm saying, continue to get to know them, there has to be an element of interest there that's either like, I can learn something from this person or I really enjoy this person's company. And the reason why I would enjoy somebody's company would be because they're a fucking interesting person. But let me tell you what happens to me, right? I meet guys and they'll talk to me about their business shit and you know, they'll ask me questions about what I think about this, that, and the third. And I'll offer a suggestion that's so smart and so like, man, this is gonna help you out a lot. Cause I know you didn't even think about this. Maybe like, that's a good point. And I'm just like, you wouldn't even have thought about that if it wasn't for me. Which is crazy because it don't even be nothing crazy. It's just like, mm -hmm. sometimes, hello. Sometimes I really wonder like, who are these niggas without us? Like, who would these niggas be? Can you see me? Okay, yeah, yeah. But for real, who would these niggas be if they didn't have us? I straight up asked my homeboy today, I was like, who do you think is more interesting, men or women? He said, women. I said, who do you think is smarter, men or women? He's like, oh, I'm gonna have to give it to men. And I was like, why? And he couldn't give me no answer why. Obviously, he don't wanna say women because I guess that would mean he's admitting that I'm smarter than him, but, I don't know, I just feel like behind every smart man there was a smart woman who probably gave them the idea or gave them the idea that made their business be even better than what we know. Like, they, they were the ingredient that made it what we know it to be. And it's the reason why the business is so popping. I don't know, just shout out to women, man. The amount of times I've gotten in a man's car and he's played some whack ass music, I'm always like, learn something. They be like, oh shit, I ain't never heard this before. I'm like, I know. <laughs> like, well, you ain't got to tell me. I know. And that's not to say every woman's interested and every woman, you know, brings something to the table. But I know I do. I can speak for myself, girl. I know I damn do. LOL, somebody commented, I don't remember what video or what it was, but they were like, I know when I see Kennedy pull out that blue knife. <laughs> It's about to be a, I forget what she said, but she mentioned this blue knife and I was dying. Like that is too funny. Yeah, girl. I'm thinking about going live to watch Love is Blind live. Also, I wanna, I wanna talk to my girls who have been copied before. And not just that like one random time somebody copied you, but like girls who have lived their whole lives getting either their personality jocked or their style copied. I saw a TikTok of this girl and she was like, shout out to so-and-so, I stole your handwriting a whole bunch of years ago and it's been my handwriting ever since. And it's like, that girl probably knows that she stole her handwriting and probably told somebody else like, yeah, this girl stole my handwriting. And somebody probably told her like, bitch, you always think somebody trying to steal something for you. But she ain't still, yeah. That's crazy to think somebody stole your handwriting. Lo and behold, the bitch done admitted that she stole the bitch handwriting. And it's so trivial like when you hear it, right? 
but the thing is that people will steal something so small that's seemingly small but it kind of forms their personality it forms how they identify themselves and it's sad because and i'm just using that as an example for my larger point which is that a lot of people base their identity and personality off of traits that they stole from somebody else ain't that something and uh it's happened to me so many times in my life little things big things style the way that i speak my tonality the way that i walk the way that i express myself the way that i post instagram stories the way that i make videos the way that i look into the camera my facial expressions you know all those things and i have always known that being on the internet might expose myself too much to copycats but i deal with it because it's always been a risk i'm willing to take because at the end of the day girl if you are paying more attention to your future but you know i'm about to say some shit but fuck that shit this is why i wanted to shout you out i see you i feel you and i know that it's hard to Stay the course when you feel like you gotta switch shit up because motherfuckers keep copying you. Because a real original bitch don't wanna keep doing shit when they notice other people are doing it now. Now it's like, all right, now it's getting corny, right? Even though this is some shit you started, even though this is your shit, you know, even with all that in mind, you still want to do something else because one, you pissed off that you didn't got copied. Two, now you don't want to do it off the strength of knowing that people who copied you are doing it too. It's just like, I'm ready to do something else. So the constant navigation into something else, I feel you. I feel you. And this is not just about big situations, big copycat moments. It could be the small copycat moments. I used to tell this joke in high school and one day I walked in on a girl telling my joke and I said, oh, wow. now wait a minute. Wait a minute. One of my bigger copycat moments was, and this is someone copying me, not me being the copycat. But one time I walked into work and this girl I was working with had my tattoo. Same place, same thing. I said, I know you, what is that? And she just tried to explain it like, oh, I thought that was cute. So I, so you got the same permanent ink in the same place as me. That's weird. That's weird. You know, that's one of the bigger uh, copycat moments that I've experienced. But on social media, I experience it all the time, girl. All the time. Because I'm literally on social media. So like, you know, I have multiple social media platforms with over 100,000 people watching me. Probably close to like 200, over 200,000 people all across the board. When people be like, I right, think you copy him that. You think 200,000 people, you don't think there's at least one person out of that 200,000 people that would be a copycat? Like, do you think bitches is just making that shit up? It's not made up, it's real. People copy. And whenever I hear someone do the whole like, people always think they copy it. I'm just like, ho, you might be the one out here copying. You might be the one out here copying. Cause only a bitch who ain't never been copied before, but steady be doing the copying, will question whether or not people are out here copying. That's, well, that's what I think. I think anybody who's anybody knows that people fully be copying folks. You are in denial. Cause you be doing it. Cause you be damn doing it. I'd rather you be honest and be like, I just love how you do that shit. You know what I'm saying? I think any anybody would appreciate that. And while they also remind you like, just be yourself. Cause that's really what it's about. You seeing somebody confidently do something and it's because they feel comfortable doing it because it's them. That's their thing. But what do I know, girl? This ain't about the copycat. This is about the girls getting copied and I just wanted to tell y'all, I, I feel you. I'm here with you. I see you. Oh, I didn't realize you were already on. <laughs> Sorry. Didn't realize you was already on here. I'm doing pretty good with my like users in the fridge shit. I was thinking about how I didn't have anything to eat at home. 
And it was like, no, you still have chicken that you cooked from a few days ago. And yeah, what was that? That was Sunday, Tuesday. Yeah, good rent. Still got that. And um, what else? Got down. Oh, and I have these green beans and my Japanese potatoes. I still do a good job of this, but I be like, y'all see how often I go to the grocery store. But like, I do like to only buy a few meals at a time so then things aren't going bad. I will say I'm doing a good job at that. When I go to the grocery store, I'm like replenishing bread, getting some snacks, replenishing my coconut drink that I love. I'm not like buying full on everything. Maybe getting some fruit uh, once I run out, like that type shit. Oh, worst feeling is when you with your own boy outside eating someplace and you see a fine man. I want to scream like, I'm not with him! I swear! I swear. Like, this is a waste of opportunity right now. Because now this motherfucker think we together and I'm getting pissed. And I saw somebody cute today. I said, oh, hell no. Nah. This nigga really think I'm with you. Now that bitch, that's the type of shit. Nah, I be getting mad. <laughs> I be getting mad for real. Cause you don't see cute, I, well I don't see cute guys enough for me to be like missing my chance because I'm with one of my homeboys. Like hell no, nah. that's a hell no. Nah. For me seasoning greens is very simple. I just use a little bit of extra virgin olive oil, put that on the bottom of the pan and then I put some at the top. I'm gonna put some black pepper in there, a good amount. Make sure everybody getting some. Girl, why well, I think I got got to because I saw these in TJ Maxx and they were sold as a set. When I bought this, it was just one. Why would I think, and I didn't even say nothing. I was just like, yeah, just the one will do. <laughs> but now I'm seeing them in the store and they come as a set. So annoying. That happened to me too one time with the curtain. I bought it and then when I got home, realized there was only one curtain panel. Never went and said nothing. So I just have one curtain panel. Um, what am I getting out of here? What do I need? What do I, oh, I need an onion and I also need this lemon. Is this lemon good? It look funny. So we'll cut up a new one. Let's do this one. Cut up a new one. I don't realize that I eat as healthy as I do until somebody else says something. This is just the shit I like. You know what I'm saying? Like, I like this kind of meal. A vegetable, chicken, potatoes. I like that. And potatoes are good for you. You gotta realize we live in a world that benefits off of diet culture and it comes from societal bullshit that says that like thin is better. Now, obviously, you know, there is a such thing I think is, you know, being unhealthy. But I also think that there's a such thing as just like being overweight because you always been overweight. Now if you gain weight because you be eating, if you're not eating in a healthy way, that's one thing. But you can eat healthy and gain weight. I don't mind gaining weight. You know, I think I just want to be healthy. That's, that's my bottom line. Like weight, okay, fine. Weight in certain areas, I don't like that. Like when I start seeing, you know, my shape is looking funny. That's when I gotta step in like, hold on, ho, where that waist go? You know, I do like to have a good ass to waist ratio, that's me. But other than that, let me get back to my point. I just feel like in America, we have some diet culture issues that be having folks believing that the thinner you are, the better looking you are, and it's just not true. I know plenty of bad bitches bigger than me. Okay, the next thing I do, Cause also part of this is like, you can't overcook your greens. So, so next I take some butter, I cut it up into like a little bit of cubes. And I'm just gonna put that there. And then put a lid on it. This is the only lid I have left. This, these potatoes look, wanna see? Potatoes are about done. Actually, I think they are done. I'm gonna just turn this off while I finish everything else. So with the chicken, because I don't want it to dry out, I'm gonna put this in some foil and put it in the stove. I'm gonna put this in there with it. All the 
about the garlic like garlic requires too much <laughs> it's so lazy and I don't like the already like minced garlic I don't know why but I'm just like who did the mincing you know I just want to know who was involved so I get to eat it Charles mm -hmm. your lunch is ready <laughs> girl they they keep trying to call out miss nutta and charles talking about them because they they put a video out and them showing up to new york and people was like oh my god it's miss nutta it's charles it's miss nutta well you can just hear them like oh my god ah! but you couldn't see them girl why somebody on twitter was like there's nobody there that's a trap that's playing in the back that they made i said not nah, they made it but and people try to call them out i'm like y'all I think they're in on the joke, like now at least. Maybe in the beginning they thought they could get away with it, but they know now that we all know because now they keep making videos with the same soundtrack. So I'm just like, they know that we're talking about this. They don't care if we're laughing at them. Like, what are you not understanding? They're okay if we laugh at them. They don't care. I'm gonna put, I'm gonna put a dash of salt, just a dash of it on the potatoes. They needed that. And the, the the green beans be on real low because I just want them to steam. They're not supposed to be, I don't like when um, green beans be brown and limp. Like, uh uh, that's not a green bean no more. It's a brown bean. You're eating a brown string bean. Yeah. You are no longer eating green beans. Should I go live on TikTok? No, should I go live on TikTok? Trying to decide. Charles, the lunch is ready. <laughs> oh, I was on Twitter a lot today. So, um, I didn't realize on Real Housewives of Potomac that this girl, this new girl that's there, Kierna, Kierna, Key something. We gonna call her Kiki. I didn't realize that Kiki was the bitch that I saw on TikTok, be, uh, not on TikTok, but on Twitter, beating somebody up, girl, in the club. Remember um, before they started, uh, before Real Housewives was back on, there was a video of someone from the cast fighting and it was like, that's a friend of somebody on the cast, that's not one of the actual cast members. Girl, I said, uh-uh, she beating up the Sesame Street girl. I said, wait a minute. So anyway, on Twitter today, I saw a preview for next week, which by, by the time you're watching this, it's what came out yesterday on Sunday. I saw that NECA was trying to get her together because basically she was asking NECA like, what else is the problem? You know what I'm saying? With you and Wendy, because NECA was trying to make it seem like this is, and in the beginning, I didn't actually have a problem with NECA. Like when everybody was like, NECA called Wendy a bitch. I'm like, so? like. That's how these bitches get down. Like, it's Real Housewives. Like, that's the, the name of the game. And also just the context of the conversation. I'm like, bitch made sense in that situation. It wasn't just like out of nowhere. It made sense in that situation. Anyway, moving on. I was not fully Team Wendy. It wasn't like, neck is horrible. I wasn't on that side. And I'm not, I'm still not on that side of like, I think Neck is horrible, but I do think NECA has lost the fight and has lost the plot of her fight. Like, you were mad because you found out that Wendy didn't want you on the show and because she didn't want you on the show, she started talking about you to y'all's mutual friend, Lebe, and then Wendy's mother got involved and told you that she was doing some kind of witchcraft on you, okay? And excuse me if I'm, if, just excuse me, I don't know. Cause they, girl, people are mad about it, right? And I understand why they're mad about it because we're on a platform where I'm weird. They're on a platform where they're not gonna handle this in a sensitive way because they don't even know what the fuck going on. So it is kind of like, uh, you don't want to push stereotypes like that on Bravo because they don't know how to fucking handle this in the same way they didn't know how to handle the colorism conversation. So I get the annoyance with NECA bringing this up knowing that it's not gonna be handled properly. But I also think that Wendy's mom didn't do a good job of explaining herself. If I remember correctly, she did say I did call her and I told her 
something that I said. Well, that kind of sounds like what Naked said you said it, you know? So, I don't know. What it boils down to is, oh, I'm gonna put a little bit of garlic powder on this since I didn't cut up garlic. Did I buy that garlic powder? I don't remember what I was saying, but yeah, I just think Naked's lost the the thing that was like, okay, you have a fight to, oh, that's what it is. It's like, why are we still talking about this? Like, when Wendy and Neka sat down for whatever that was, um, I just felt like Wendy is not open to change. Like, Wendy doesn't want to be cool with Neka after all of this. I think Wendy has decided she does not want to be cool with Neka, and I, I get it, shit, the bitch was talking about your mama. You don't want to be cool with her, that's fine. But say that, don't make it seem like NECA is the problem. It's just like, and that's kind of my issue with Wendy. I just don't be feeling like she be honest. It's like, if you don't want to be friends with the bitch, stand on that and say that. Don't talk in circles and try to speak in your educated lingo because it's not doing the thing you think it's doing. Like, in my humble opinion, it's just not. I be like, girl, you could have said that sooner. Like, you said a whole lot of nothing. Let's see if our chicken's hot. Hot chicken! Uh, not at all. God damn. I'm gonna need that to hurry up because I'm getting hungry. It's getting serious. Child, your lunch is ready. I think I'm gonna go ahead and throw these potatoes out because they look crazy. Like, once they start doing this and they feel like too soft, like these feel kind of soft, they're done. Throw that out. Charles, your lunch is ready. Okay, I think I'm gonna go live on TikTok and watch Love is Blind live. So I'll see you girls later. So what you're seeing here is nothing less than a meal made for a queen. Let's talk about it. So we've got Japanese sweet potatoes and they are, um, season to perfection sorry mouth is watering that will happen when something good is in front of you <laughs> and then we have some garlic lemon string beans not those brown string beans you girls make these are green string beans right and then here what's glistening upon the side is just a nice piece of chicken yes again season to perfection not season to death but season to perfection everything looks good and guess what it is good Thank you. Bye bye. This just made me think about something. I forgot about it, but I just remember it. Last week, I'm checking out at the grocery store, and the girl checking me out. You know, normally at Trader Joe's when they see you pull up with your, when you're holding one of the little like hand carts, they'll open up this little thing for you, for you to sit it on. And she wasn't doing that yet. So I was like, oh, are you open? And she was like, yeah, yeah, one second. And turns around, grabs some tissue, blows her nose. Anybody who knows me knows, I don't want to see all that. And I most definitely don't want to hear all that. So I'm like, you know, turn the music up on my thing so I don't hear it. When she was done, turn my music back down. She goes to grab my cart and then proceeds to go and grab my groceries. I said, I, ooh, ooh, I'm so sorry. Bit of a germaphobe. <laughs> Do you mind using some hand sanitizer? She was like, oh, for sure, definitely. Yeah, I, you know, grew up in like a med house, like a medical house. And so I'm used to the, you know, us having like a lot of like air purifiers and stuff. So like naturally kills the germs. And so I'm just like, girl, that's not where you are right now though. That was disgusting, literally disgusting. And today I'm checking out and the woman's trying to open up one of the little plastic bags, she can't get it open. Next thing I know, I see her thumb touching her tongue. So then she could open a bag up. This is not, no. You gotta have one of them little pads to touch that can give you some moisture or some water or something. You don't lick your finger and then proceed to touch all my groceries and my bags. It, it's just like, come on, man. 
What are we doing, guys? What are we doing? After COVID, I just assumed everybody was going to be more aware of germs and the spreading of germs. I get that we're not wearing masks anymore. I'll wear a mask on a plane. But other than that, I don't wear a mask. I don't think I see anyone. Actually, no. One of my neighbors always has a mask on, all the time. He's actually the only white guy that talks to me out of all of my white annoying neighbors. He's the only one that's not annoying and actually speaks to me like a regular human being. Um, but he always has a mask on. I still have to go to the grocery store again for some other stuff that I didn't get. So I'll be doing that later. Oh, I'm seeing the come down from the coconut milk drink. I do think I overdid it. I still am obsessed with them, but I don't, I'm not getting a craving for them anymore. Like I'm not like, oh, I need that coconut drink, you know. I'm able to go in that store without buying it. And I still have some in there. Like I didn't have one at all yesterday. Like I wasn't craving it, so that's a good sign. That's good. Anyway, I'm starving right now. I'm about to heat up this food from last night. So I was eating casualty, an oil stain. Let me show you how I get an oil stain out. Come over here, come over here. Okay, you see the stain, right? It's right there. I'm gonna take this baking soda and pour it directly on our stain. Just a little bit, just to cover it. Yep. That's good. And I'm gonna just let that sit there for a cool 15, 20, and I'll come back and see about it. But that's gonna suck up all that oil up out the shirt. Trying to wash an oil stain is a waste of time and you'll be pissed because it'll become a permanent stain. Once you wash and dry something that has an oil stain on it, you're not getting that oil stain out. And trust me, I've done it a thousand times and I'm always so pissed. So yeah, you need to use baking soda. I'll show you once it's pulled up. Okay, let's check on this, right? So here it go. Let me see some, hold on. I'm vlogging this for my girl. Let me put some pants on while you're trying to see my um my undercarriage. <laughs> oh, you wish that this camera would turn with me, don't you? No, girl, you can't see what I've got. I'm keeping that camera that way. No, no, can you please show us something? Please, please, I'm begging you, I'm begging you. No, I'm sorry. Okay. All right. So you come right here. Actually, I guess I should put it in the garbage. All right. Hopefully it's been long enough. Hold on, girls. Hopefully it's been long enough. Y'all. Y'all. Oh no, I could do a little bit longer. I could do it a little bit longer because it's still there a little bit. But it's almost gone, so hold it. Hold on. Wait a second, just need a little bit more powder. I use a typing before to try and remove the stain. Don't ever know, don't. And this is for an oil stain. Yeah. Okay, we'll come back and check that in, I don't know, probably like another 15, 20 minutes. Okay, try to. Let's see. It's almost gone, like you can only see it a little bit. But now I'm gonna put baking soda on the inside just to see if that will get rid of the little bit of residue that's left. But basically, it's gone. You know what I'm saying? Tink. Bitch, it has been hours. I forgot all about my shirt. But it should definitely be up now. I still see it, but I think it's just because I'm looking for it. I think once I wash it, I won't be able to see it. Maybe I also need to like spread it out. I'm trying to think about what I want to eat tonight. I'm definitely not in the mood to cook. I feel like I'll probably just make some salmon toast. not about to water is the big one because I want the soil to dry out so I can repot it because it's leaning like crazy and it needs to be repotted. Okay, I've got to clean 
look, it's a clean up type day. It's raining outside, it's cold. It's gonna be nice and warm after today. Like, I feel like today is the last cold day. And it's a random cold day because it's been warm. So I just feel like this is the last little cold. It's 42 degrees, it's gonna be a high of 46. But then after this, let me take this off. After this, it's gonna be 60, 70s. <laughs> okay, I seriously have to clean though. It's just like things are everywhere. It's just like annoying. Like you got shoes, the fillings for my boots in here, couch in disarray. Just things ain't where they supposed to be type shit. So let's tidy up. I also have to do, let me run the dishwasher because that's what we need to do. Actually let a little bit of the baking powder, baking soda sit overnight, like a little bit, and that's what really got it out. Yeah, that's what really got it out. She's a homemaker. I don't know what it is, but lighting the incense just makes me clean better. And definitely like keeps me in the mood to clean.
All clean. Done. I just ran into one of the people who like own the, not own, but she works for the, the rental units that are like Airbnbs in my building. And I never say anything to them, but today I was like, cause every time I see them and I don't say something, I'm like, why didn't you ask anything to them? Cause I be wanting to ask like, do you work for the rental unit? Okay, I wanted to ask you like, who do we call to complain about noise? So this time I was like, you know what? Say something, y'all both on here. So I was like, excuse me, do you work for the rental company? She was like, yeah, I do. And I was like, okay, yeah. I was wondering like, who would I contact if I need to make a complaint? Smile completely goes away. She looks me up and down. She was like, I mean, you can ask me. You mean, you can tell me. And so I was like, oh, okay, yeah. You know, it gets really loud. One of the rental units is above me. Now the elevator doors open up. Here she go walking out. Well, I mean, yeah, like if you want to complain, like you can contact someone. As she's walking off. So it's like, one, can't hear you. Two, who you talking about? Three, bitch, stop playing with me. So I'm walking at the pace I've been walking at. I'm not about to chase after you. I'm not about to try and keep up with your pace of step. You just presented yourself like you was the person who I could tell this information to. So why is you now got your back turned to me trying to tell me some shit, like go someplace else to tell that to? Huh? What happened that you could tell me? So I was like, I, I couldn't hear you. She was like, yeah, we have like a, a decibel, that's something. She said, we have something in the in the unit. When it gets too loud, we contact them immediately. But like, um, you can always contact so-and-so. And then she said their name and I was just like, oh, who was that? And then she looks at me and she was like, do you, um, in the leasing office? And what she wanted to say is like, do you live here? Like, don't you know who that is? Bitch, why the fuck you, you think I know everybody in the leasing office name? Like, that's the type of shit that makes me want to clock somebody. Mind you, our leasing office, and I say that because our leasing office has changed management. So there's new people in the office. You think I know everybody by motherfucking name, bitch? I oughta. It'd be shit like that where it's just like, don't, don't piss me off. Anyway, so now I got attitude. It'll be gone in a little bit, but I definitely got attitude. You know, another thing about it is, is that there are some people who treat their job like it's theirs. Like the thing that they're, they're, you know, the people who they're working for, they treat it like it's their thing. Like, bitch, you don't own these units. So stop trying to take, don't take it personal what I'm saying. As soon as I said I had a complaint, frown upside down, now she looking stupid. It's like, where's the humanity part in this? Like, don't you understand why somebody would have a complaint if it's in regards to noise? Like, don't you live someplace? Wouldn't it be annoying if you heard noise on a regular basis? Oh, okay. So why are you looking confused and stupid? Because I'm telling you that's what I'm dealing with. I, I hate shit like that. And I used to work in hospitality where people would complain all the time about things that I completely understood. And so instead of me gaslighting them and making them feel like, why would you complain about that? I always let them know like, I completely understand where you're coming from. Let me see what I can do about this. Every single time, that's the only way to handle it. Let me see what I can do about this, period. Because it's not my issue. My responsibility is to try to create a solution for you. That's literally what my job is. So that's all I'm going to do. I'm not gonna take it personal or get upset because you complained about something. That's just weird. If you work in the service industry, please don't do that shit. It's really fucking weird and annoying. I'ma take a bougie ass like a digger, but a digger, but a whatever she want. Digger, jippy, creepy, chopper, whatever she want. You better whatever you want. Yeah. I'ma take a bougie ass to Rodeo and a bugger by a whatever she want. Take a take a bath, take a fuck it, take a dog. And what I hate even more about this whole thing, whole thing is that these bitches, all these bitches that I've had to deal with in this building, they like to try and make it seem like I'm the problem. Um because I'm addressing them and because I don't play into the, the back and forth. Like, I said what I said, I'm not filling in the gaps, um, create a solution or I'm gonna go over you. You feel me? Like, who can I talk to over you? Who's your manager? Since you can't help me, because we do need a solution. If you can't create it for me, look, tell me, pull me in the direction of the person who can. As soon as I hear, well, I can't perfectly find who can. Let's talk about that. And that does something to people. Now all of a sudden they feel like you're trying them. I'm not trying you, but if you're telling me you're unable to do something, I need you to point me in the direction of somebody who can, period. What are we talking about? Nothing. Okay, hold on. Chilla. Okay, so I'm meeting my home girl. And uh, this is the hat that I'm wearing. I don't give a damn what you think, girl. The fuck do you know? For real. All right, now I'm wearing this hat. 
Nah, because I'm wearing this hat. I ain't gonna wear it. I think I look cute. I like it. Okay, I'll see you girls later, but I gotta go. <laughs> oh shit. This is called, me and my friend are going out for coffee for her. She loves coffee. Um, and I'm just down for the ride. Just the girl who's showing up with my friend. And then we're going to lunch later. I'll see y'all when I get back. Bye. Nah, cause I'm sitting here talking to myself, talking about the whole copycat thing. Girl, I'm still, I'm still it. Somebody who I follow, who watches my YouTube vlog, shout out to her. She recently was copied. Like she had posted something on TikTok and another girl basically made a video making it seem like she had came up with that, like it was an original thought. You know what is really annoying to me? Because now we live in this world where like, people will be like, Oh, you know, she was in, she or he was inspired by what you said. Like, oh, it's no, it wasn't that. It was just inspiration. It's like, okay, I don't mind inspiring someone for them to go and do their thing. But if I inspired you to just do what I'm doing, that's not inspiration. That's copying, you know? And I'd rather a motherfucker stand on the fact that they a copycat than try to defend the copying of it all. Like, you're, you're just straight up copying. And... This is another reason why I be choosing to gatekeep because I don't like looking like other bitches. I don't, I don't know what, you know, the, the I don't gatekeep warriors have at it, girl. Go, y'all can clone up. Like, y'all wanna be clones together, be clones together. But me, I'm not ignorant in the way that it's like, I think I'm the only person with these glasses on. But. My thing is, is I understand my influence and if I were to make multiple videos saying, I got these glasses from so-and-so, that might encourage someone to go out and buy the glasses. I don't want hundreds of people going out buying these glasses. I like wearing these glasses because I don't see hundreds of people wearing them. Like, that's, that's why I like them. Because I didn't see them anywhere else. I thought they looked great on me. And the fact that I did not see them anywhere else was just the added benefit. So like, you know, when it comes to glasses, and I'll use the glasses example because I get asked about my glasses all the time. And the crazy thing is, is that I've shared where all my glasses are from. Like, I'm, I go live like basically every other day at this point. And there are days where I don't share, there are days where I do share. I think part of like the annoying thing with the gatekeeping shit is that I don't think people should have an expectation for you to share everything. Cause someone decides to work in the influencer space doesn't mean that you should have access to all of their shit. That's not how that works. You get to know whatever the fuck I want you to know. You get to know what I'm actually trying to, you know, tell you about. I don't have to tell you about every motherfucking thing up in here, girl. I don't know, who told you that? I also think there are people who don't get it because everybody who they hang out with, like your whole crew is a crew of copiers. Like, it's a crew of copycats. Cause like, I'm like, there's no way you don't know what I'm talking about. It's like, but birds of a feather flock together. I, I truly believe that people who like straight up copy, they hang out with other type of copycat ass people. And so when y'all sitting around cackling and, and rocking in your chair back and forth talking about, ha ah, yeah, I found out where she got on, I found out where she got this on so. Like, y'all are all affirming each other's weirdo shit because y'all all be on the same shit. You feel me? Like, I've never been a part of a friend circle where people were not original. Obviously, some of us are stronger in areas than other, like personal style or, you know, music taste or, you know, how we, what our day-to-days look like. Like, everybody's shit, it looks different. But for the most part, everybody has their own style of, like, life. And... Yeah, I've never, I've never hung around just a straight up copycat ass bitch. I, I can't thrive in that type of space. I've had my whole personality stolen, okay? This is not even, this is not something I'm making up. Like, when I think about the girl on TikTok who was saying that her TikTok got stolen, like, I've heard someone in person repeat something I said to them, you know, in open company, as if they said it, as if, as if it was an original thought of theirs. And the thing about it is that I think people don't think I'm gonna remember, or maybe they think people aren't gonna remember, but like, I, I remember things that I said. So when I hear someone repeat it, or I find out that they said that to someone, but they didn't tell the someone, oh, I got that from Kennedy, then I'd be like, you know, like, don't you feel a little weird? <laughs> I don't know, let me get off this subject. Let me go wash my face, bye.
No, un gelato, per favore. Un caffè con latte, per favore. Un caffè con latte, per favore. Favore. Sì, un tè, per favore. Shout out to Saturday night. This is my Saturday night. Yay. Number five in the Bronze League. Number five worldwide, baby, on Duolingo, honey. I'm getting my time in. Con Zucchero. Zucchero. Con Zucchero. This is what I'm doing on a Saturday night. I am on Duolingo taking my language classes. I'm learning Italian and Spanish. Very similar languages, but also very different. Um, I was taking Italian last year and also in 2020, I was taking Italian, actually. 2020 is when I started taking it. Last year, um, I tried to like dip back in and I, I fell off. I wanna stay consistent. This is also like a new hobby that keeps me from scrolling and just gives me something else to do other than scrolling or like, yeah, doing nothing. And it's fun, I'm enjoying it. The only people are thriving right now are the people who compartmentalize the most human parts of themselves. Ooh, I just got that off Evelyn from the internet's post. And I'm just like, yeah, that's me. You know what I mean? I ain't thriving. And it is because there's too much fucked up shit going on for me to thrive. Like, this world is not set up for a bitch to thrive. It's set up for a bitch to cry. And I've been doing a lot of that. I've been doing a lot of that, bitch. Um, okay, so, you ever have one of those moments where like, you're looking around and you're just like, you hate how something looks in your house? And then, it's that like, thing where it's like, wait, I can change that. It's like I almost forgot that like, if I don't like it, I can just change it. And so, I, there's a few areas of my house that are like that and it all takes time and dedication and really like focusing on that one area for, for me to complete it. And I just haven't done that yet, but small, small changes, okay? So like, for one, I've always loved this setup. I think it's cute, like, it's full, but it doesn't feel like super like heavy and like clustered. Like I love that area. Never like this. Never, never like this. Okay. And it's just simply like, don't know what to put there, you know, but it's like, you do know what to put there. Part of why this is set up like this is for functionality purposes. Like, oh, I like, you know, my salt and pepper to be right here, but it's like, why don't, why don't we remove ourselves from the shackles of feeling like just because that's what you always used to do, that it still has to be like that, it don't. This can go in the cabinet, in the cabinetry with the rest of the motherfucking seasoning. So we take it to the cabinetry. Put it in the cabinetry. Close the cabinetry. Now, okay? You feel me? So then my next move, right? My next move might be to, let me give you a grand look. First of all, I just came from running some errands. So the thing about these, right? I don't know if it's because it's warmer outside, but the Girl Scouts are scouting. They're out, okay? And I, I think they gonna get me every time, but them Adventure Fools, oh, they giving some a run for their money. Those Adventure Fools are so motherfucking good. I don't even wanna talk about it. Got some new water to try. Uh, this is Zen Water, 100% recycled ocean-bound plastic. Yuck. And it's alkaline water, vapor distilled water. Girl, I got it because it was on sale, okay? Like, please. Next, an organization situation. Okay, so this little number I got, it's iridescent, it's fun, it's cute, it's colorful. You know, I'm in my colorful era, my colorful bag, and I was thinking about using this. I was thinking about using this. I didn't really think about how I use it, no, I did. It was really for this plant up here. Hold on. So for this big boy, which I need to water. I was gonna. And the thing is, 
you can't really even see this pot anyway. But yeah, I was just gonna move it out of this. Ooh, she need a repotting. Ooh, now that I done told on myself, look at them roots. Girl, look at the root. Uh-oh. Okay, that's okay. I got you, girl. I got you. We gonna get you about this pot. Okay. All right. Oh, this might be too big. Well, it's gonna have to move to a new pot, so actually it's not too big. Where do I get a new? Oh, Jesus. Okay, so I'm gonna have to get it. Okay, but it, it's eventually gonna go in this. Okay, so that's what's gonna be up there. I'm excited for that. That's me, you know? Oh, shit. I tangled up. Shoot, I should've did, I, well, I didn't know, but. So where can I get these little small? Girl, the roots are wrapping around. Uh-oh, they all wrapping around on the top. That's why I, I was wondering why her leaves were turning yellow. I'm like, you normally be thriving. What's really going on? Bitch, she's suffocating. Okay, that's something to take care of, a savagery. What time is it? Maybe I can go do that. It's so nice outside. It's literally summertime. So it's five o'clock. My friends are coming over here. I forget what time she said. Let me see. Six, seven. Okay, so I have some time. I could go to Home Depot. I just don't feel like going there again. Okay, then I got this little number, which I thought was really cute because it looks denim. Like, I don't know if you can see in person, but it's textured and I don't know, it has an illusion where it looks denim to me. So I thought this was kind of cool. Um, so fuck you, you know? Now, the thing about this area is that you need to act like it doesn't even exist because it damn near don't. This is not, this is not even here right now. Like you're not seeing that. And that's another thing where it's like, I hate that so much that I should move it. Like, you know, every time I see it, I'm always like, oh, hold on my legs and I'm trying to, but, you know, so it's like, how about you just move it? How about that, girl? Stop putting yourself through all that. I think I'm gonna sit this. I like that. No, I like that. I like that. Like, you can like what you like, and I'm gonna like what I like. All right, so. That was that, next. Oh, this is just a TJ Maxx come up, La Crusade. A La Crusade. Um, these are very expensive. I got this for $12.99. So I'm gonna put this over here. Girl, look in our colorful bag. Like, it's time to issue in the color. Like, let's talk about it. Like, mama needed some color, so she got it. That's me. That's me, you think. So, yeah, like, and that's just point blank to it. Okay? And so then, even this, like, this is some shit I've had for a long time, but I need some fresh ones, you know, so that can go, like, I'm over that, that's me. So what I could do, right, you talking about what I could do, ain't got to, but I could, is just leave it bare for right now until I figure it out. Like, you know, it ain't got to be filled with shit. Maybe for right now, I'll just put these flowers up there. These flowers on the way out, too. Uh, well, I hate that. It's like a competition. Oh, I got some butter chicken spice from TJ Maxx. Excited for that. So when I was in TJ Maxx, I actually um, bought this like table, a small table, because I thought it was the same color wood as this table, as my kitchen table. Come to find out it was darker, and so I, I returned it. Yeah, random. Yo, I gotta change, I gotta, I gotta change that now, like, it's killing me. So I need to get a small little pot for it to go in. What size is this? Should I, I mean, even if I took a picture, I wouldn't know the size. Let me just not play myself. Take a little picture. Okay. So I think I'm gonna run out. I'm starving though. All I've eaten today is banana. So maybe next week we're gonna be doing a lot of um, organizing up under the sink. It's so cluttered. And so, yeah, I need more than this. But the other thing that I found, I kind of dropped it in the store. 
So I was like, oh girl, this is damaged goods. I will not be buying this, put it right back. So yeah, I'll have to see if they restock. Um, Cause there was a bigger one that I had and it was nice, but I just broke it. Um, I'm just looking around. I think I should kind of get semi cute too. Like I've been outside looking yuck. Not yuck, but just like undone. Just like errands shit. But I feel like maybe I should. Nah, fuck these. No, see I was about to say fuck these niggas. But it's like no, it's not fuck these niggas. Cause you want these niggas. You know what I'm saying? So don't say fuck these niggas. Just figure out what you want to do. Okay, I'll see y'all in a second.